Hello, and welcome to episode 41 of Mad Knitting. It is May 31st, 2023, so it's the last day of May. I'm just squeezing in a second episode this month before we roll into June. Um, let me introduce myself. It's been a few weeks, I feel a little rusty. My name is Susan, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and you can find me on Ravelry as Madtown Mama and on Instagram as Madtown underscore Mama. And this YouTube channel is where I just, I share all about the things that I craft and sometimes other thoughts too. If you follow me on Instagram where I am quite frequently, probably more frequently than I should admit, um, I post there about knitting and gardening and food and music and feminism and just kind of whatever I feel like. Um, but lately, Instagram has just been so annoying and I see a lot of other people complain about this too. I just, I feel like every time I open the app and I know you can like go to the corner and you know, hit, hit the little thing where it'll just show you posts from people you're following. but. If I just open the app, it feels like it's just videos and ads and suggested accounts and it's uh, more effort than it should be to just see the stuff from the people that I want to follow and that I want to see. So that's really annoying. Um, anyway, I don't know if you're having that experience too. Maybe it's a sign that I should like back off of that and, and maybe spend my time doing other things. Anyway. I'm coming to you from Madison, Wisconsin, where I live with my husband and my two teenage kids. And I work for a small nonprofit and I work from home. So on days like today, where I actually have no meetings, miracle of miracles, um, I can carve out a little piece of my day to make a video. And it's been a while since I've done that. Um, May is sort of a whirlwind. So anyone out there who has teenagers in their lives or is the parent of a teenager or you know works with teenagers <laughs> um, you can probably relate to this but um, there's just a lot that goes on at the end of the school year obviously um, my two kids are in high school and they're a delight really they I'm I got really lucky <laughs> in the in the parent department um, but they are not involved in very many extracurricular activities. Like for most of the year, it's quite manageable. Like I feel like they have found a pretty decent balance between like academic load, extracurricular stuff, and like having some time also to, you know, spend time with friends or, or whatever. But the month of May is when even the few things they're doing, all of that comes to an end. So there's end of year concerts for the, you know, the various youth ensembles they're involved in and for the school band and for the private studios for the, you know, the, the, like the cello teacher, the piano teacher, all of that is all happens in May. So fortunately there hasn't been too many conflicts with it, but it's just been like one thing after another. Um, so I've just had to be on a lot. Um, I've had a lot of meetings and stuff. I've had a little bit of work drama. So it's just, there's been a lot going on. And, you know, I've, I've been feeling a little up and down with all of it lately, honestly. So finally felt like making a video today. Um, another thing about May is that where I live, so I'm in Madison, Wisconsin, like I said, and um, if you live in the upper Midwest, you'll understand when I say that like spring is late to come, but when it arrives, it sort of arrives all at once. So we have this very narrow window of time uh, to like get things planted in a garden and sort of deal with stuff in the yard. And so I've been basically, that's a long way of saying, I've been spending a lot of time outside, which I very much enjoy. I really like just getting in the dirt. <laughs> honestly. Um, so I'm drinking in case you want to know. Um, I think it's kind of silly when like YouTubers share what they're drinking, like anybody cares, but to be indicative of the kind of week I'm having, I am drinking warmed up coffee 
in a mug I got for free from Penzi's. And I can tell you that my spouse would be completely horrified because he's sort of a coffee snob. Um, and to hear that I'd like just poured my leftover cold coffee in here and heated it up in the microwave, he would not be having that anyway. This is gonna get me through the afternoon. Okay, well, I'm here to talk about crafting and the things that I am making after all that long preamble. Um, mostly I'm a knitter. That is where most of my crafting energy goes. I knit all the time. I love to do it. I've been doing it since I was a kid. And yeah, that's my passion. Um, but I also do a little bit of sewing and or quilting from time to time. And every once in a while I have projects to show from, um, from sewing. Today I do have one sewing project, but I'm gonna save that for the end because my format is to show you knitting first. Okay, well, my first finished object, you can kind of see my piles back here. I am so stoked about this. It is way too hot to have this on today, so I'm afraid that I am not gonna be modeling it for you. Um, it's gonna be about 90 degrees today and over the next few days. And in Celsius, I actually looked this up, in Celsius that's 32, maybe 32 point something. So it's gonna be hot. We've had air quality alerts every day for the last few days. And I am not gonna be putting on a wool and mohair silk sweater, sorry. But it's done, it's done, it's done. And I have to say, I'm as surprised as the next person how much I love this sweater. I'm calling it Barbie Girl, cause duh. Cause it's like all pink, it's all these shades of pink. And cause the Barbie movie's coming out this summer and I'm just kind of intrigued by the whole thing. And I'm looking forward to seeing it. So here it is. It's done, it's warm, it's light as air, and it's gonna feel so nice to wear when the weather gets cold. You know, in like September, October. But let me let me tell you about this, because I've shared about it a few times, but obviously now it's done, so I can give you all the details. This, the pattern is called Kinsan, or Kinsan, and it's from the book Moon and Turtle, which I've talked about before. I don't have it with me, but um, it's, a book by Kiyomi and Sachiko Bergen, who are twin sisters based out of Canada, and they both do knitting design. Um, the book is published by Pom Pom Press, and there's a lot of just really cool patterns in it, like just about every single one I look at and think, I wanna make that. Um, but the Kinsan sweater is, it's like a pretty basic top-down raglan pullover, um, but it's got, in the pattern, they have several, sizes and samples um so show you like showing it on a few different kind of body types but also um they have these different options for stripe sequences and of course you know the pattern is basic enough you can do whatever you want in terms of stripes but it's a really good way to get some inspiration and some ideas for how you might combine different colors or use up you know if you've got a bunch of different colors in small amounts of of yarn that you want to put together. So what I did was pair some single ply superwash merino in fingering weight um, that when I bought it, I didn't realize it was going to be single ply, um, which is fine. That was just my bad for, for overlooking that. But I didn't want to use it on its own because I didn't think it would hold up very well. And I held it together with a strand of mohair silk to get the DK gauge that the pattern called for. And this is what I ended up with. So what I used, and you, you can see that I obviously had more of this dark fuchsia color or magenta color because I had so much of it on the bottom of the sleeves and a little bit on the bottom of the body. And I also used it on the collar. So that was Knit Picks Aloft, and I think the color is called Mirth. I'd have to look it up for sure. Um, and then for this, for the wider stripes you see here, I used one skein of mohair silk from Republica Unicornia, 
and I lost the label so I can't remember the color but I think it was part of her unicorn series like she's got a few different unicorn named colors and it was either unicorn birthday party or unicorn smoothie or something like that and that one has I mean it's got little flecks of other colors like when I look at this I see yellow and blue and the pink comes in sort of different shades going from very very light sort of cotton candy barbie pink to a deeper fuchsia um but it's very um very pink <laughs> i don't know how else to say it anyway there was one skein of that and i was very careful about how i was like managing the yarn so with the one skein of the Republic Unicornia, and then I had two skeins of the Knit Picks Aloft in this deeper fuchsia, um, I did a little bit of math to sort of figure out what percentage of the stripes would be one versus the other. And I figured out that if I did the wider stripes out of one yarn, then I should have enough left to do the collar, the hem, and the cuffs in the other. Um, and as it was, I actually kind of ran out of the mohair silk from the hand dyed a little sooner than I wanted to on the sleeves, but I don't mind. I think it's fine the way it is. Um, I did it that way because I knew I wanted the darker color close to my face. I just, I think, generally, I think darker colors work better for me next to my face, darker and brighter rather than like pale pastel things. So anyway, I'm thrilled with it. And, um... Gail from the Yarniacs podcast famously loves pink. And when I shared this on the group, <clears throat> on the Ravelry forum, um, she said she really loves the sweater. So Gail, I don't know if you're watching this, but I did think of you quite a lot when I was knitting this because there's so much pink. And the whole time I was knitting, I'm like, I don't really like pink, but I really love this sweater. Um, I think the reason it works for me is because I really, I say I don't like pink, but um, I do actually appreciate a, like a really deep fuchsia, kind of leaning towards a magenta, purple, red, you know, that sort of range of pink. That I do like. So, anyway. When the weather cools down, I'll be wearing this. So that's my big finished object, and I am really excited to start another sweater, and I've got at least another one that I need to finish. I'll get to that eventually. Um, but now that I've finished that one, I'm kind of in that in-between stage where I haven't started another big project and I need to kind of plan out what that's gonna be. So in the meantime, I've got all these other smaller things that I've been doing. And I've actually, I think the next thing I'll show you is that I've finished a couple of hats. Hats that weren't even a twinkle in my eye the last time that I made a video. So the first one I'll show you is this hat. It's called Ruska and is by Jessica McDonald, who has just so many beautiful patterns. Oh goodness. She has beautiful color work patterns, especially, and does a lot of things that are kid size. And she even has, I have these, of course, um, she has a collection of patterns for children and then she made like adult versions of all of them um, and they're both in these you know book collections and i have them both because they're just so nice anyway the ruska hat um there's a sweater by the same name that uses the same motif um, and i want to knit the sweater too someday i'm i'm really happy with how this turned out and with how it fit um I just kind of needed a palette cleanser and I'm pretty sure that I cast it on. It was a very last minute decision. We were headed to some concert or performance or something. I'm telling you the last month has been just kind of a blur and I needed something that I didn't need to follow a pattern for. And since it starts with so much ribbing on the brim, this seemed like a good fit. So I used, um, Barocco Ultra Alpaca Worsted. This was all yarn that I had sitting in my stash, left over from other projects. This main gray color, I don't remember what I used it for originally. Maybe another hat, because there's quite a bit left. 
and then there's this dark red and coral color that were left over from a sweater project I made so long ago that I don't even have it anymore. I don't know why I got rid of that sweater because I liked it. It was nice, but anyway. I really, really like Barocco Ultra Alpaca. Um, it's half wool, half alpaca. I've made a lot of things out of it. It's warm. It doesn't make me itch. Sometimes alpaca can feel prickly to me, but whatever they use in this doesn't seem to bother me. Um, I have found that it holds its shape. I've never really had a problem with it pilling. Um, and I've used it in sweaters and hats. I have yet to use it in mittens, but I, I think it would be really good for mittens. I think it'd be nice and warm, but. And I really, I love how this has blocked out. Um, I gave it a good soak and let it dry. And when you do that, the color work just kind of, you know, smooths out. A lot of the bumps are gone and I'm just, I'm very happy with it. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. I can tell you, I'll talk about the needle. I, I always forget to tell you what needle size I used. I don't even know how much that matters to anyone who's watching, but um, I used size six for the ribbing and I used size eight for the color work portions and I would switch back to a size seven for the plain rounds. My tension is always a little tighter when I am doing stranded color work. So I always go up one needle size uh, when I am doing stranded color work so that it doesn't like pull in and pucker. And I have found that that works for me. So anyway, so that's the Ruska hat. Um, I suppose I'll keep it, it fits me and I like it. I'm almost at the point where I have too many hats. I should probably go through them and give some away. Um, so when I was working on that and I got through the ribbing and got to the color work, I found myself in a situation where I, I needed another quick cast on something, some kind of take along project. And I just, like I went through all my worsted weight scraps, you know, my partial skeins, and I found several colors that I kind of liked how they look together. And I just cast on for some ribbing and I thought, I'll just figure out the color work later when I go. And that's what I did. So here's another hat. This is sort of improvised. So I cast on the same number of stitches for the brim as for Ruska. I cast on, the Ruska hat comes in several sizes and I cast on the size that has a 96 stitch cast on. And 96 stitches I find is a really good number for a worsted weight hat um, because it's got a circum circumference that fits my head pretty well. Um, you know, if you're working for a larger head, you might want to aim for a larger gauge, a fatter gauge, um, or, you know, maybe pick a different number. But 96 is divisible by three, four, six, eight, 12. Is it divisible by 16? No, it's not divisible by 16, but those are all really good numbers. So if you're, if you're using different color work chart patterns, you know, your chances are pretty good that they'll fit within that stitch count without having to fudge. So this is the hat I made. And you know, if I did it again, I think I would make it just like maybe a half inch taller because I like it when it really comes down over my ears. But this is a good snug fit. This will be good for um, for those transition seasons like fall and spring when it's not freezing cold, but cold enough that I want my head covered, which is frequent because I get cold easily. So anyway, it fits me nicely. Um, I use, these are all leftover bits of yarn and I actually brought them with me so you can see just how much I have left. Um, I actually have a cream color I decided not to use because I thought it would be too contrasty. But this just goes to show you how, long, how hard it is to actually use up all your yarn. Anyway, the brim and a little bit in the middle, I used this. Um, label is long, long gone, but it's Tweedy, and I think it might be Plymouth Galway Tweed. 
So it's all wool, none of these are super washed. But what I like about this is that, is that it has, the tweed parts are, of course, not showing up for you. But there's a little bit of gold and a little bit of red and then darker blue and a little bit of green. There's actually a lot of colors in here, but I like how it just sort of picks up these other colors that I wanted to put in the hat. And then these are other bits of wool. I had two shades of yellow. This sort of, this is like very close to the color of a sunflower. And then here's a darker mustardy gold, which you can see I just about used up. There's maybe two yards of that left. I found a darker blue a heather color. This might be nitpicks, I'm not totally sure. And then this nice deep red. I think a brighter red might have looked better, but I wanted to use up small bits. So I kind of, I kind of improvised the color work. I didn't totally make it up. I was using charts from the Strange Brew book by Tin Can Knits, which this is such an excellent resource, by the way. Um, it's all sweater patterns, and they give you formulas for making sweaters bottom up, top down, every size of human, um, from baby to big, and you know, gives you several different gauges. But one of the cool things about it, and I don't want to like totally give it away, but they have a whole set of stitch patterns in the back. Um, many different ones and they're all in counts of four or six or eight. I think there are a few that are maybe 12. Yeah, there are a few that are 12, but the, I mean, you can just see in the, in the patterns on the cover, how there's a wide variety and none of them are so large and elaborate that it would be hard to sort of like they're all increments small enough that you can like plug it in pretty easily to a yoke pattern or a hat pattern if you want or mittens or a cowl or anything like there's just a lot of possibilities there so i this was really fun because i did the brim and then i thought okay what colors do i want to use next and the next one i wanted to use was the darker blue and i wanted to combine the light yellow with the gold because I like how they looked with the dark blue so I just kind of looked for a for a stitch pattern that I thought would work with that combination and then when I got done with that I thought okay now what do I want to do next what would look good next and I just kind of built it as I go and I didn't worry too much about how how it was looking and you know tried to strike a good balance between the different colors and and it worked out, you know, if it hadn't worked out very well, it's just a hat, like not a big deal. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. So I'll probably do more of these. Um, I don't know, you know, again, this is not super wash. So if I end up with too many hats and want to give some away, I'll have to think carefully about who might receive them because, you know, you want to make sure that it's somebody who is okay with hand washing. So that's that. Um, the last finished object I have is a pair of socks, which I have to find. Where are they? Oh, heavens, here we go. These are the socks. These are again, an on the go project. I had started these. I've talked about these at least once before, if not twice. And for some reason, it took me a while to come around to these. I started them originally. Man, the light is just really bad. It's really bright outside, but it's kind of dark in here. And yeah, I don't know. Anyway, this, the socks are, this is the second pair I've made with this yarn that I got on clearance from Webs. Um, it's, a Yak Blend by Lana Grossa. Um, I think it's called About Berlin Yak Color Block. It's kind of a clunky name for a yarn. But it's got these long, like these very tall stripes, hence the color block. The yak content makes the colors kind of heathery. Um, anyway, so I just did plain 
plain socks. And I think I shared before that I originally cast on a few more stitches, thinking that these would be for someone whose feet are a little bit bigger than mine. And then I got cold feet, ha ha ha, thinking, oh, I don't know if that size is gonna really work out. So I ripped it out and started over. And then something just, just didn't feel right about making these socks for the particular person I had in mind. So I ended up just finishing them to fit me and they've gone in my sock drawer. Um, so there's really nothing earth shattering to say about these other, yeah, nothing earth shattering to say. <laughs> Um, the one thing I did a little differently than usual was that I did a garter stitch heel. I like doing a short row heel. And I enjoyed the garter stitch just because I didn't feel like purling, but there's just something about that contrasting texture for the heel that I find very appealing. So I think I will probably continue to do that on self-striping socks that I do short row heels on. So that's that's my plan moving forward, at least for the time being. Um, and you can tell I didn't do anything to try to um, like match up the striping at all. I just kept going, like when I was done with the first sock, I just started the next one with wherever I was in the yarn and didn't worry too much about matching up, which for me is fine. Um, I really need my socks to match in terms of size. So I'm very particular about counting all the rounds. Like sometimes I'll sti stick stitch markers in like every 10 or 20 rounds just so I can keep track of where I am. But I'm not particular about the colors and stripes matching up. That's just a little too fussy for me. Okay, on to works in progress. One of the reasons it took me so long to do another video this month was that it just it felt like I hadn't really been doing any knitting but somehow finishing up these things made it feel like I was accomplishing more um, so it means I only have three works in progress to show you um, I have a couple others that just I haven't really made any progress on so I'm not going to bother to rehash those today what should I do first I think I'll show you another hat you know I've been needing on the go hats I, I always need on the go projects and it's almost always hat or socks. Um, unless I have like a very small, you know, like a sweater for a very small person that's at a good sort of plain stockinette stage, but I haven't had one of those in a while. Um, so <laughs> this was started. My son decided to join the ultimate team at school. Um, we're not really a, team sports family, but um, Ultimate is about as chill as you can get, especially at his school. And he's really been enjoying it, so that's great. Um, but he had a game last week that I wanted to go to and I knew I needed to keep my hands busy. So again, this is sort of a recurring theme. I just grabbed some yarn and um, took it to the field and ended up spending almost all of the first half trying to untangle the mohair that I was using because it sort of all came off the ball at once and then there was this big knot and I tried to untangle it and I got to a point where I thought, this is not worth it. This is never going to come undone. But I didn't throw it out yet, so maybe I'll be able to. I don't know. I've heard there's a trick where you can stick mohair silk in the freezer, so maybe I should try that. Anyway, um, if you're a regular viewer, you may recall that I was sharing um, about, so I'm going to talk about the, this, okay. Blah. Feels like it's been a while since I've done this. So the hat I'm doing is just a plain one by one ribbed beanie, and I'm going to make it tall enough so that there's a nice, generous brim to fold up over the ears because I have a very, very warm combination of fibers here. So it should be a very tall, warm hat. And I'm not using a pattern. This is just, I think I cast on 90 stitches on size eight needles. Um, and that's, that's how I'm moving forward. But the yarn I'm using is, and if you're a regular viewer, like I was saying, starting to say, you may recognize this. This is again, Barocco Ultra Alpaca. 
in this beautiful lavender heather color. And this is from a sweater that I knit for my mom. Um, she had purchased the yarn and the pattern and was working on the sweater and made a lot of mistakes and kept ripping back and got frustrated. And finally, for her Christmas present, I offered to knit it for her. Um, so I did the main part of the body and she did the sleeves and it all worked out beautifully. Meanwhile, there was quite a lot, lot of yarn left over, um, including everything from the portion of the body that she had knit and re-knit and re-knit like three or four times. Um, and because she had knit and ripped out and knit so much, the yarn was pretty worn. So I didn't use that, I set it aside, um, but I didn't want it to go to waste either. So I had this brilliant idea that, well, it's, you know, it's perfectly good yarn, even if it's a little bit fuzzy, but since it's fuzzy anyway, if I pair it up with silk mohair, you know, the fuzz will just be part of the fabric. It's not gonna look worn, it'll just, you know, blend blend in really so my original plan and i will still do this because there's qu quite a bit of the alpaca and i went ahead and got two skeins this is nitpicks aloft um the color i think is royal i'm not entirely sure but it's or eggplant it's it's this really beautiful purple color that goes very nicely with the ultra alpaca yarn anyway my original idea was to make mittens which i still plan to do um but mittens didn't feel very portable because you know you're fussing with increases and i just wanted something i could cast on and not have to think about beyond the cast on so it'll be a matching set eventually but yeah this is what i have so far and it's it's looking tall enough i'll probably have to uh start the decreases before too long but i really do want a generous brim yeah, I'm using size eight needles. I didn't want anything too like puffy and airy. So it's not like a real tight firm gauge, but it's not flimsy either. For mittens, I will use much smaller needles because I like firm, firm mittens um, to help keep the wind out. But I'm, I'm very pleased with this. I think this purple is nice. And um, I think it's, I think it was rather clever of me to figure out the best way to use worn fuzzy yarn is to just pair it with another fuzzy yarn. So the more fuzz, the merrier, right? Um, okay. So that's the first thing. Um, my next project is much more interesting <laughs> and fun, although it's been slow going. I have shared about this previously because I had started it and it's still not done. But the abandoned birthday socks, this person's birthday has come and gone, but I still want to make them something. And I know they'll appreciate it anytime, even if it's after their birthday. Um, but I'm working on a gnome. A gnome by Sarah Shira also known as Imagine Landscapes. I don't know who else is showing up. Ugh. I should really figure out lighting and stuff, you all. But you know, this is not like my job. It's not, I'm not here to like be an influencer or gain followers or be all professional about it. I just like to talk about knitting. So that's just, that's just how it is. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I'll take pictures so you can at least see. So the pattern that's what I was saying, is called, I never, she has so many patterns, you all. Her known patterns are brilliant. She is like a never ending fount of like cool gnome patterns. Here we gnome again is what it's called. And it's from a couple years ago, but the feature of this gnome is that it has a twisted stitch cable pattern. There's three panels, you know, sort of a three-sided hat uh, situation for the hat. That's what's going on for the hat. And then there's a twisted stitch, a different cable pattern for the body. 
and I do not love executing twisted knit stitches. I know it shouldn't really be a big deal, but for some reason it just feels a little extra fiddly and fussy for me, especially when you're cabling. And I use the cable needle, cable needle, cable needle. That's funny. Somebody should make something called a cable needle for cabling. Anyway, I do use a cable needle for these, even though it's a lot of just like one stitch over one stitch because knitting through the back loop to twist the knit stitches, for some reason, I can't do that without the cable needle, which is fine. I like using a cable needle, but it just made this kind of slow going. That plus the fact that it's basically a toy, so I'm gonna have to stuff it and deal with all that. Just, it's just not been a very fast moving project. However, I am done mo with most of this. I think the next step is to start stuffing it and then like do the decreases to close up the bottom of the gnome. So I'm pretty close to being done, but um, this is a tall fella. Fella? Lady gnome? I don't know. Non-binary? It's tall gnome. Whichever. I don't know that this gnome has a gender or needs one. Anyway, so that's the body. This is the beard. I went ahead and did the beard, which is very fun. There's, it's got a little more detail than some beards. Some of her gnome beards are just kind of like garter stitch triangles, but this has um, this has a little bit more of a stitch pattern feature, plus the bobble for the nose. Um, yeah, so I have to finish the butt, you know, stuff and finish the body and then make the arms and put everything together. Um, the yarn I'm using for the beard, this I'm using like basic worsted weight wool, same as those hats essentially, or the one hat. Um, no idea what this cream yarn is, is sort of on the yellow side of cream, which I think looks pretty nice with the main color, which is, this is a beautiful heathery green. I think the color is called Evergreen and it's Barocco Lanus in the worsted weight. This is left over from a sweater I made for my daughter, a holiday themed sweater. And I ended up with quite a lot of extra yarn from that. So, you know, <laughs> I have a lot of yarn that is like left over from other projects because I got too much or just, you know, because just didn't use as much as I thought it would need. Anyway, a lot of this left over, or this one skein left over, and so I am using it to make this gnome. And there'll be plenty left for something else. Maybe another hat, I don't know. Anyway, this is really fun. Um, her, I have to say, Sarah's patterns are very well written. She gives you all the details you need about how to do things efficiently, put things together. Um, like you do, this one started with the brim of the hat. So you're decreasing as you go up and then you kind of flip it when you're all done, you sort of flip it and pick up stitches along the underside and knit down for the body. And she just gives you really clear, good instructions for how to do all of that. Um, and I've not watched any of her tutorials on YouTube, but she has a whole bunch of them that explain, I don't know, I think pretty much everything you need to know about gnome knitting. There's, you know, different kinds of beards and she has eye cord instructions for the arms and there's color work and cables and all kinds of stuff. So, um, so if you find yourself not understanding something in the pattern, I think you could probably find a tutorial that she has posted on YouTube that would explain it. Okay, my last work in progress, I just started this morning. I wake up really early in the morning. That happens when you're over 40, I think. Um, and especially this time of year when the sun's up at, you know, five or before and the birds are making noise and I just wake up. So I get up really early and I make my coffee and I usually listen, I find a news podcast and I listen to that. And this morning, I started to suck. So those, those socks for my dad that I talked about in my last episode, I had done some Tweety brown socks with a little bit of a stripe thing on the cuff and sent them to my dad only a month late for his birthday, but he loves them and it's hot where they live right now. So he doesn't mind that he can't wear them. 
um, or doesn't mind that they're late because he can't wear them. Well, I decided to start another similar sock. This time I'm gonna try to balance the stripes out better. Oh, come on. Focusing just isn't happening. Um, these, this time these are for my brother, so I'm casting on more stitches because his feet are bigger. My brother has the biggest feet of anybody that I knit for. And I know he watches sometimes, so act surprised when you get these, okay? Anyway, um, it's, they're gonna be, you know, basic socks again, um, but with this stripe pattern happening in the cuff to make them look kind of like work socks or hiking socks. And I'm using, again, Knit Picks. I have labels today. So for the main color, I have Prussian Heather, which is a lovely sort of denim blue. And then for the contrast, it's the same contrast color I used for my dad. It's called Oyster Heather. And it's a really nice creamy color, kind of a leaning towards beige, like a sort of a deep creamy color. And it looks really nice with this blue. Nice contrast without being too sort of bright. Uh, my brother's birthday is in July, so hopefully I'm giving myself enough time to finish these as long as I don't get too distracted with other things or, or knit the wrong size like I did for my dad. Um, anyway, I don't think I have anything more to say <laughs> about these socks. I'm knitting them cuffed down. I will do a heel flap and gusset because that's my preferred heel construction unless it's self-striping, which obviously this is not. I'm using size one needles. Um, it's just, it's good take along knitting, sock knitting. The only tricky part is that um, I'll have to like look up how long to make the foot and make sure I'm on target with that. But it'll be a while before I get there because it's an 80 stitch sock and I have to get through the whole cuff and heel first. Okay, that's it for finished projects and works in progress, at least that are in a decent state to show. But I have one sewing project to share with you. And this is again, a repeat, you know, it must be, there's something comforting about coming back to things that you know and that are familiar. Um, I feel like I'm not being terribly adventurous with my crafting these days, although I don't know, Making a pink fuzzy sweater, that's kind of adventurous for me. Um, and the, the gnome, it's not like there are techniques I don't know, but the gnome is a little, yeah, maybe a little more on the adventurous side. But anyway, my last episode, I shared a pair of pajama pants that I made for my daughter and I made her another pair. Um, so same pattern, same size, because fortunately the first pair fit beautifully. And so I'm just going to show you the second pair that I made. I love these. I wish they were mine. I'm kidding. She totally deserves nice pajama pants. Um, yeah, these, they have pockets, which is nice. A must, according to her. So there are pockets that you sew into the side seams. Um, the pattern is the Luna Pants by Ray Hoekstra of Made by Ray. Um, and she did not originally market these as pajama pants. I have a thread to cut. But they work really nicely for that, especially if you use soft, comfy fabric. Um, very easy pattern to follow. I mean, I, I recommend Ray Hoekstra's patterns for everything. I've made several things both for adult sizes and for children. And I really want to make some of these for me um, once I'm done making enough for my daughter. Um, let's see, the pattern call, what the only alteration I made was that the pattern calls for elastic in the ankles too. Um, and my daughter hates having anything tied at her ankles and for pajamas it seemed like a better option just to hem up, hem up the bottom of the, of the pant leg. So that's the only alteration I made. Plus it's less elastic pulling through a casing, which I'm a fan of because I mean, 
This is about the easiest waistband treatment you can have, but still elastic is kind of a pain. It likes to twist and yeah, anyway. This one worked out a little easier than the first one for some reason. So the things I like about the pattern are the pieces fit together. Apparently that's not a given necessarily for indie pattern designers. Um, the instructions are very clear and very good, but the, since the first pair fit so well, this went much faster because I didn't have to trace the pattern again. I just cut it out and went. Um, one thing I really like about this pattern, I think I mentioned this before, is that there is a separate piece that's a casing or the, what do you call it, a facing for the waistband. Um, and it, you, so you sew it to the top of the pants, um, iron under the edge, stitch it down to make the casing and it just, it just works. It works better than when you have everything in one piece and fold it over. So I'm really happy about that. Um, the fabric I used is a double gauze and that, that is what makes these so nice. It's a double gauze. So it's really, really light, really soft. Um, this is some organic cotton double gauze that I actually bought from Joann's years ago. Um, I think I had plans to make something for myself and those never came to fruition, but I had enough of it to make pants for my daughter and she liked it well enough that we decided to go for that. I wanted her to have like a lighter pair that she could wear in warmer weather because um, she's not really into shorts. So double gauze is wonderful to wear. It just, it breathes really well and it's not too difficult to sew, although you have to be really careful that it doesn't shift around too much. Sometimes it wants to do that. Um, but for a simple pattern like this, that really wasn't too much of an issue because you've got, you've got a little flexibility there. Um, what do I have to say other than that? It felt good to use stash fabric. Um, it felt good to make something in a day. Um, I made this on Memorial Day. I showed her the fabric to make sure she liked it. I dug it out and asked her if she liked it and she liked it well enough. And I cut it out and did a bunch of the sewing that afternoon. I finished it in the evening and now she has a pair. And yeah, now she can wear them. So it's been, I'm looking at the time it's been almost 50 minutes, so I should probably get back to work. I should definitely get back to work because I have things to do. Um, but I'm so glad you joined me and I will see you next time for more knitting and sewing and chit chat.